Okay. Kia ora tātou. Good morning. Kia ora tātou. No my to my key Global Watch, Indigenous Watch this morning. Thank you, Margaret, for organising us this morning. Uh, for the, those of you who have not met myself or Janice, I'm Mere Karaka and Janice is online, Janice Stephenson, and we're leading today's watch from Aotearoa, New Zealand, as uh, Mary is on her way home from Israel, as we understand. So um, <clears throat> on this watch, um, we have uh, Waiata or Himini to open, which is the Lord's Prayer sung in Te Reo Māori, which is our language here of New Zealand. Um, so God bless you all as we sit on this watch and join together in prayer uh, for Indigenous nations, as it is the Indigenous Global Watch um, Forum this afternoon or in your morning, wherever you are, morning or night. So could we please have our opening song, which is the Lord's Prayer. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence here with us, that in your presence is the fullness of joy that unites us and brings us together. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are a great example and that you lead us and guide us in all truth. In your holy name, amen. That was uh, the Lord's Prayer in Te Reo Māori. I hope you were able to see the captions underneath um, of the song, which were in English, but since we all know it off the back of our head, we know uh, we know what they were singing. Uh, so God bless you as we enter into this time of prayer. Um, I have a couple of words here and scriptures here to share before we get on to prayer points. Um, so today I really want to talk and share about us as Indigenous and pray into the Indigenous of following the example of Christ. Um, as we have had on this watch, we've had some information put up of the good work that indigenous, indigenous nations are doing around the globe, which is so in every nation and also here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Uh, but the remembrance of us, who we are as sons and daughters of Christ and sons and daughters of God are led by the spirit of God. Therefore, there is a responsibility within us to uphold, um, uphold the attributes of Christ, of how we live and who we live for. So today, as I just share a couple of scriptures about following um, how, you know, for us to hold to the word of God, but also follow the word of Christ. So we live in this world today, but we're not of it. And greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. And of course, we know this is the living Lord Jesus Christ. But we live amongst the decisions also that are made by our governing authorities within our nations that are not good for us as a people or citizens, um, so to speak, of our nations. But remembering and bringing to remembrance today that we who are in Christ Jesus are actually the remedy, the remedy or the solution for our nations and for our communities. And with the leading and the help of the Holy Spirit and the guidance of the word of God, uh, in this hour, prophetically, I would be speaking that a revival of the Bible, of the word of God, is what is needed and what's coming. And I say this because in the end time harvest, to have a harvest, there has to be faith. Faith comes by hearing, by hearing the word of Christ, the messages of Christ, the word of God. And so, therefore, a revival of the scriptural word of God, I, um, I'm speaking of today. And that we would be a people uh, within our nations that would not shrink back. So I have some scriptures here for that. One is out of Hebrews 10, verse 35 to 39. And I'm just going to read these scriptures and then I'm going to speak to them. As they will be our prayer points to pray for. So it says here in Hebrews 10, verse 35 to 39. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. For in just a little while, he who is coming will come and not delay. But my righteous one will live by faith. And if he shrinks back, I will not be pleased with him. This is Paul's words, these are. But we 
are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who believe and are saved. And today, as we pray, as one of our prayer points, we pray for the courage and the encouragement of the Spirit of God to come upon the nations and the Indigenous people of the nations, that as they work within the communities of their people, within their tribes and with their countrymen and countrywomen, that the Spirit of the Lord um, that is in them and upon them would um, cause them to stand in the hour that they're in, no matter how deep the valley of darkness might be, that they would stand and not shrink back. So this is one prayer point I would like us to pray for. And as they stand shrink, not shrinking back, they will hold to the faith and the word of God, hold to the words of Christ. Uh, that brings redemption for the future of our nation and our generations to come. Faith comes by hearing, by hearing the word of God. Romans, Romans 10, 17 teaches us that. And so when I'm talking or sharing about a revival of the Bible, I'm talking and sharing about the revival of the reality, the reality of the words of Christ for us as Indigenous people. So as we're working within our communities, um, example here, Janice and myself, we work with the revitalization of our language, which brings a cultural identity, a natural identity of um, genealogies and language to our people. But because we are daughters of the living God and there's sons and daughters on here of the living God, we have a spiritual birth born of the spirit of God that our people would once again come into the presence of God and there would be a fresh awakening and a fresh anointing to be born of the spirit of God, that the spirit of the Lord will come upon indigenous nations through the servants, the sons and daughters of God, and that our people will become born into the revelation of Christ Jesus, born back into the father and the loving attributes of our father. So John 17, verse 6 to, 7, uh, 6 to 10, Jesus is praying for his disciples. And I've read the scripture online before, and I just want to touch on it again um, as we go through. And what John 17 <clears throat> is saying is these are the words of Jesus. So I'm going to go from John 17, verse 6, and I'll read it right down to where I want our second prayer point to be or um, to pray in relevance, really. I have, revealed, I have revealed you to those whom you gave me. This is the Lord Jesus praying to um, his father, our father, for his disciples, which are now us, because we have come through the promise uh, of his words through the disciples. So I have revealed to you, to those you have given me, out of the world they, are, they were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything, everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the word you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and the glory has come to me through them. So today, as we pray, remembering as we pray and lift up the servants of God, the sons and daughters of God, those who are working in the communities, just as Christ did, he didn't pray for the issues of the world or the issues uh, that were opposing or afflicting the indigenous peoples of the nation or his people. He was praying for his disciples, which are the actual, the, um, the solution and the remedy for where they were placed in Israel at that time. Where, and so um, as we pray on these prayer points today, we pray for the servants of God and not for the, uh, the situations or circumstances that our people or the indigenous are living under because there's many things that we've had to uh, forbear, loss of language, loss of land, all these things. And the Lord is returning them to us slowly. But the thing for us to pray for Indigenous today on this particular prayer point is the revelation of the Son of God coming afresh through the gospel word of God uh, to our people. Uh, so being born again of the spirit of God. 
So that's um, John 17, verse 6 to 10. And we've been through Hebrews 10, verse 35 to 39. And when, when we think about shrinking back, sometimes I, I believe that for Indigenous, it's about being still. We know how to be still. Indigenous peoples know how to be still for a time. And we don't make excuse of this or take it lightly like we're doing nothing because we don't know what to do. There's a, a humility with being still to actually wait for wisdom. And we know that our Lord Jesus Christ is, um, is wisdom. He's the, um, the light of life. His word is a lamp unto our, uh, our path, a light unto our feet. So it's about not going back into the past, but standing firm on where the Lord has brought us today, that we continue to walk, however, um, however that, that might look in our uh, respective nations. So 2 Timothy 4 is my last one. 2 Timothy 4, which is verse 1 to 5. My last prayer point. And then I'm going to hand it over to Janice because Janice might have something to add. So 2 Timothy 4, and this is verse 1 to 5. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in the view of his appearing, of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge, discharge all the duties of your ministry. And so I want to touch on that point again. And in the indigenous, there's many streams of work that we're in. We're in um, the education space. We're in the revitalization, revitalization of language. We're in many business spaces. We're in the health space. We're in all of these spaces, but we still work with our people at the grassroots level. And it's being able to be who God, the living God of heaven has called us to be amongst our people. So we pray for the indigenous today and who the Lord has called them to be amongst um, their tribes or their communities. That in the endeavor of having the language or the culture revitalized or the, the land return, that we return to this, which is the fundamentals of, um, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We return and hold to the gospel and hold to the gospel of Jesus Christ, doing the work of the evangelist and discharging all duties that the Holy Spirit has graced us with in the ministry. So I think that's a point to be prayed on today as Indigenous, as we pray for our Indigenous brothers and sisters, we can become very busy um, on what's happening across our nation and put our hands to the plough because of the determination and the passion. But today we talk about purpose. This is the purpose of God. This is the purpose is far greater than passion, that the purpose of God is that everyone would become a son and daughter of God, born of the spirit of God. So we pray for our indigenous brothers and sisters. We lift them up to our living father today through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and these prayer points. So I hope um, that's enough from, from me for now. And Janice, if you would like to say anything to add. Well, what I really thought um, about the scriptures that you've presented today, Mere Karaka, is um, the great falling away at the moment from the faith and, um, you know, things like burnout, uh, things like pressure and how important it is to come to the work, to the labor from the rest of God. And you 
in in the indigenous um, communities and particularly grassroots, we do see a lot of people um, being burnt out. Even um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I, I attended a tangi, a funeral of a a leader um, who was in in the recently devastated, flooded area of our nation um, who took his own life. And, um, you know, so that, 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 that charge or that commendation to us to not shrink back is so important, um, but rather to stand. Don't shrink back to stand. If, if there's a time that you can't move forward, then stand after you've done everything. Stand. Ephesians 6 tells us that. But what came to mind for me was the church of Laodice Laodicea, the last church that um, is mentioned in the book of Revelation. And we see around us the spirit of Laodicea at this time. And um, she who had um, had works, Jesus knew her works, but there was no, there was not coldness and there was hot, no, not hotness, no fire on the altar. But there was just a lukewarmness. And oh, how he wished that she was either cold or hot. But because of the lukewarmness, he would vomit out of his mouth. And then there's the saying, well, you know, I am rich. I am wealthy. I have need of nothing. But the not knowing that there is the wretchedness the miserableness, the poorness, the blindness, and the nakedness. And what struck me really was that this church of Laodicea, when we shrink back into the backslidden or the apostate state, we become the harlot. We become the harlot, not the bride. And to me, you know, that, that's serious because as we read on in Revelation, we see the, um, the end of the harlot. And so I think that's really a, a prayer point in these days. Is, is like you said, Mary Karaka, we don't shrink back. We never shrink back. Lord, save us from ever shrinking back from you. Um, keep, us, keep us hot. Uh, yep. keep us keep the fire burning keep us putting ourselves on the altar that we are the sacrifice um, and keep us um, open to the Lord for for continual construction and transformation um, that we would be the bride that is prepared for his coming the called out the, the ecclesia so that was really just um, what I had felt, Medikaraka, when you talked about the scriptures that you were presenting today. So prayer points, yeah. Thank you, Janice. Um, Thanks. Psalms twenty-three. Um, it ref we know Psalms. Hmm. You're muted, Medikaraka, dear. You're muted, Medikaraka. Sorry, uh, did I do that, yep. uh, Ma Margaret? Sorry, I've lost okay. the instructions on the bottom of my screen. Sorry, I'll get you to mute okay. me. It's okay. Okay, just the um, Psalms 23, of, I just want to um, talk to that point again about not shrinking back. Even here in Psalm 23, which is a psalm we know really well, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And sometimes when things are heavy, dark and hard, we can have that feeling of shrinking back or feel like we want to just curl up and, and, not, and not raise our heads. But even here, um, what is written here, even though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, 
Even though things are thick and dark and hard around us, we continue to walk in the grace of God because he is with us, his rod and staff comforts us. So um, as we pray, we're mindful that not that things are not perfect in, in, in the countries or around the globe, and things might seem like the valley of the shadow of death, but it says, even though I walk through. So you, we continue to walk. There might be times where we keep still and wait for the word of the Lord to come. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits like the watchman waits for the dawn. I wait for the Lord. And in his word, I put my hope. And, and those times, there's a waiting, but there's a continuing walking and not a shrinking back. So God bless you as we begin to pray on these prayer points. Christine Amen. has her hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to add, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Um, I wanted to add from the uh, Elijah journey um, that that um, this was a, a big prayer point there as well, um, because the guide there and also yeah, some people, they told us, um, the people of Israel, when they came always deceived from the other nations, the problem was not that they had chosen then the gods of the others, the problem was always that they had been mixed with these things and that God doesn't like this mixing. And also he, he always prayed with his spirit of Isabel and Ahab. And they 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 didn't want them to separate from, from the God of Israel. They wanted them to be mixed because then they had could um, weaken them through this. And that was really a revelation for myself. But I think for many of us that it's not this being hot or cold the, the problem is this mixture and that god doesn't like mixture <laughs> and yeah and that's why i think that's really important to pray for this that we it's so good uh, that the, people, the indigenous people and yeah like um have this um boldness to stand yeah you know um, thank you christine for bringing that because yeah. in the scripture and that i read out at 2 timothy four um verse five it says this but you keep your head in all situations endure hardship do the work of the evangelist and discharge all duties of your ministry but before that it says this um sorry before that in verse four it says this they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths now mm -hmm. um indigenous cultures have narratives we have narratives within the land and some of the narratives that we have align with biblical texts like the creation stories, other, other stories, but there are some myths and narratives mm. that are not from God and that's something we need to pray into today. And we mm. pray for the servants of God to stand strong on this mm. uh, because it leads the next generation into disillusionment because they mm. want their culture, they want their language, they want their natural identity mm. back. But mm. in the hearing of lies or in the hearing of myths and um, what I call spiritual airy fairy um, stories, mm. uh, they come into disillusionment. So thank you, Christine, for that, because that is a strong point for Indigenous people is to heed mm. to the word of the Lord and where our narratives fit the word or where our narratives come into the flow with the word of God mm -hmm. as, very, as a godly thing to back. But anything other than that, I think we're in a turning point. The only way that it can turn is if the truth comes out. We're in a turning point of truth within indigenous nations. And the next generation are going to come into the revelation that not all is what they seemed to have thought it was. And we, as the sons and daughters of God through Christ Jesus need to be there to support them in that and mm -hmm. the truth. Mm -hmm. I see Ruth's got a hand up to Medicanaka. Ruth, would you like to cheer? Yeah, I'd love to just um, pray. I, I I wanted to say that this word that you spoke at the beginning about waiting, um, that it's not a giving up waiting, but a really listening waiting. I, that really um, touched my heart. I think that's really important. Um, and I can learn from that as well. But I just wanted to pray into that a little bit. May I? Yes, please. 
Yes, Lord, I just want to thank you for this um, culture, cultural waiting that's learned and, and practiced within the indigenous people. Lord, I pray that you would really refine that, that they listen to your word, that they'd be willing to wait for you, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, who created them. Lord, that they would listen to your word from the Bible, that they would let it settle into their hearts and give them wisdom about where they should be active and how they should move forward, um, not hanging on to their personal culture necessarily, but really holding on to the culture of you, Lord. Lord, you have a kingdom that's quite different from our kingdom here on the on the earth. And you don't walk in a path of of fear and you don't walk in a path of aggression and you don't walk in a path of I'm being right because you just simply are right. You're a, a righteous God and your kingdom shall be built here on earth. And as we wait and listen and then move forward, we'll be building your kingdom and that will be successful. Lord, I just pray that you would bless um, like Kaka and, and all those who are working with her on your word, but that they might be able to um, finish this project and that your word be, would become well heard and honored um, as, as the people read and step forward in your kingdom. I pray for your great blessing. Thank you, Lord. And Amen. Thank you. Shoana, would you like to pray? Yes, thank you. Lord, I ask really to uh, encourage um, the indigenous people to dig in mm -hmm. your word and to, to wait on you, how to set it into practice and to live it out. Uh, we shouldn't only read, but we should live it out. And I ask to, to move our their spirit, to fill them with their spirit, with your spirit. So um, they are very clear and not mixing um, everything with other things. So they, they really cut off wrong branches and wrong um, theology or ideologies or whatever. And um, I ask Holy Spirit really to show what is not according to your will, what is not according to your word and that they are brave to cut it off because this deception in our days is so strong, especially under the young people, um, especially concerning marriage and the time before marriage um, and uh, to deal with other spirit things. And I really ask for clear revelation that they are not getting discouraged that they are getting encouraged to put your word in practice, to, to preach the gospel, to um, dig deeper what it means that you died for us and shed your blood for us and rose again, that your blood and your death and resurrection is enough for us and that there is a clear purification and everything which is coming from you that that they might live it out and um, everything which is not from you, that they really um, acknowledge it and, and discern it and that they throw it out of their lives and be bold, even um, people are against them, even people have a di different opinion and that you help them not to fear men but to fear you more than man. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Would anyone else like to pray before I share something else? Um, yes, Mary Karaka, please. Uh, and also, yes. Wendy. Yes. Um, I'd like to pray for prayer point number two. And I would like to lift up the servants of God working in the community today. And uh, sometimes, you know, when we are working in the community, we get so, um, how would you say, into the work 
and we forget where we're coming from. So I really would like to pray that the, the people will not fall into, into the, you know, the pressure of the situation, but to come to the revelation of where God has really put you, put us there, put them there for the calling so that they will know what the Lord is actually telling them at that very hour as they are, as they are working and they will be in tune with the Holy Spirit. So, Father, we pray for each and every person in the community that are working on different levels. Um, as Mary Karaka has uh, uh, spoken earlier, Lord God, in different parts of the community, where it's the education, if it is uh, agriculture, whatever it is, Father, um, bringing back the people uh, uh, in their own language and everything like that, Father, we pray, Lord God, that they will keep the focus on you in the mighty name of Jesus and being uh, uh, stayed on the course of what you have called them to be in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 There's, also, there's also Christine with her hand up. Yes. Christine? Yes, Lord, I, I would like to pray um, against the spirit of intimidation, God. I ask you that uh, you want to stand against the spirit of intimidation that silence the lips of the of your of your people uh, and the indigenous i ask you that you um, help them to stand up against this spirit of intimidation and to know who is your god who is their god and um, to speak out the living word of god and to speak out what all these people and former times in the bible also did and said no we will not bow down we will not um, give in the spirit of intimidation we will um, speak out what is the truth also if it means death for us I ask you to really help them to not fear for their lives or not fear for their families or not fearing for um, their career or whatever it means to, to stand strong and to, um, to, to say the truth um, I ask you for big situations, but also for small situations, the young people and the older people, that they take their stand in you again and, and see how you fight for them, how you um, help them, how you do miracles for them when they, um, uh, when they don't run away or when they don't silence their mouths. But, and I thank you that you give them strength. I thank you that you enable them again. I thank you that um, they will say it's enough we will be no more silent we will say what God puts in our heart we will stand against the lies of the enemy and against the uh, mixture in our communities or in our in, in this nation God I, I thank you for everyone who's standing up and I ask you to, to support them and to support one another with prayer um, that if anyone has to say something that the others come and pray with him and pray for him and stand together like um, Daniel and his three friends did uh, when they had this challenging situation God amen um, just agreeing with Margaret's prayer Galatians 6 9 so let us not grow weary in well doing for in due time we will reap and um, Dwight Moody always said I grow weary in the work, but not of the work. So we can be faithful and pure, but labor is no substitute for love in our relationship with Christ. So we thank you, Lord, that um, you keep us. Um, the joy of the Lord is our strength. It is our buoyancy. And um, Lord, we pray that you will just remind us just give us a little tap when we're starting to get a bit um weary of the work lord if we do that um we ask your forgiveness if we are like that and we ask for the fresh wind of your spirit always as we go about our day in jesus name amen pam would you like to share pray Yes, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set his seal of ownership on us, and put his spirit in our hearts 
as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. So, Father, we thank you for your seal of ownership on, on your people and every um, people group. And we ask that they would know the, the, the calling and the, um, what you have for them in the future, that what it is that you've given the deposit of the Spirit for, that they'll be able to stand faithfully. It says further down, just at the start of chapter 2, it said, it is by faith you stand firm. So I pray that you'd help people to understand that this is your ownership, this is your anointing, and to receive the, the deposit of the Holy Spirit, guaranteeing what you're going for. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Joe, would you like to pray? Sorry, I'm on my phone, so it takes a while to get up. Yes, Lord, I'd, I'd just like to pray for um, that you, we will not, those of you, us who, who know the Lord in a real way and who have had revelation of the goodness of God, that we will be able to um, express that to others who aren't maybe that far along their journey and not get irritated or um, kind of frustrated by um, what seems sometimes to be such mundane things that people are interested in. But Lord, help us to see people for who they are and actually to come alongside them at that point. Um, also, you know, to, to not put people off by giving them so much information that they cannot handle it. So, Lord, I just pray for all of us that, that we will pace ourselves with you, Lord, and that we will not walk further ahead of you or even lag behind you. But, Lord, that you will help us to and help me, especially in, in my journey back to South Africa on Wednesday and Thursday, Lord, just to to pace myself um, with the things that I need to do and want to do. So I just say thank you. I thank you for the opportunities the Lord has given me here in this land of Israel. But Lord, I do pray that, um, that you would just guide each one of us in our journey with you, that we will be able to to just um, highlight the things that you want highlighted at the same time in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Joe. Wendy? Yep, you need to unmute, Wendy. Sorry, the word redeem is really strong on my heart. And um, I just really want to pray, Father God, it's not just, it's all nations, all peoples have been corrupted. All peoples, Father God, have been led astray and all peoples are corrupted by the very cunning work of, of our enemy. But Father, you want to redeem. I am reminded that you made every tribe, every tongue, every language. You made them for your pleasure. You made them for your joy. You made them for your son, Jesus Christ. They, uh, you, you made them for Jesus. You made them to be in fellowship with him. You made them to walk with him and, and to be his delight. His, they, they are your gift to him. And so, Father, I pray today that you would redeem out of every tribe, tongue, nation, family, you would redeem your people. You would redeem that that you made that was good. When you made it, you said it was good, that you would redeem that which is good and all else that has been corrupted, all else that is not of you, all else that is a distraction, all else that is um, a lie, all else that is a counterfeit would fall away. Father God, that you would open the eyes of all believers and, and, and non-believers to see you, God, for who you are, for Jesus, for who he is. Father, we, we want to uh, pray against lying, deceiving, familiar and counterfeiting spirits that come alongside and, and, uh, and seduced us with things that are like you, God, or might be close to you, God, or speak a religious language, Father God. We ask that you expose them and reveal them, Father God, that the truth may set people free particularly pray for our Indigenous people, because, Father, you have 
such big calls on their lives and the nations, Father God. You have specific roles for them to play. And Father, so we pray you'd redeem them. You, you know, they are your child. You've called them by name, Father God, that they would stand up and walk in that uh, redeeming um, call that you have for them, the redeeming destiny, because they have such an important part to play. So, Father, we, we pray as Mia de Karako, they were praying today for the language. Because in New Zealand, the gospel went out and the Maori people took that word. They took that word. They received Ihu Karaiti into their hearts. They didn't receive a Western Christian uh, God. They received the living God. They received Ihu Karaiki and they walked this land and they shared the gospel and they transformed their people. And Father, we ask for that return. And we ask for that return for all of our nations and all of our peoples, that we would return to you and that you would redeem that which you want, Father God, that which you purpose, that which you destined, that you might be glorified through your peoples in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jennifer? Father, we thank you for the music and the songs that are in the heart of the indigenous people. And we pray for increased sensitivity to the sound of heaven, that they may impart it in their songs and their music. In Yeshua's name, amen. Amen. No one has their hand up to pray, so I'm just going to share something quickly for our nation here of Aotearoa, New Zealand. Uh, um, if you can remember us in our prayers and if we get the time to pray here um, after I've shared it, that we are, uh, prophetically speaking, I can say we're heading into, the time, into a time and a moment in our nation where the Indigenous are going to come again into the revelation of the scripture word of God. Uh, that part of that is what Wendy shared, is that when the gospel first came to our nation, it was shared amongst our people in our own language and it went out. Now, we have a generation today that's been hurt thinking um, and hurt and offended thinking that the faith of Christianity or the gospel of Christ has brought destruction to us. But yet in our language, in our language, um, that we speak today is actually biblical language. And there's a revelation that's coming now by the Spirit of God on our nation where this generation is going to, it's going, the Lord is going to reveal Himself that even the language that we're speaking now actually came when the first biblical text came. So a lot of our language changed when the Christian message came. And with it, words came and practices came that comes straight out of the word of God and the word of Jesus. And we're in a moment now in this nation where we're going to see that come to fruition, where the revelation will come to this next generation, where the very thing that they've been negating and negating and um, oppressing or speaking oppressively against is the very thing that they're speaking and living, which is quite profound, really. So we're in the moment of, of as so to speak, Elijah, how long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, serve him. If Baal is God, serve him. But what, we're happening, what we've got happening here in New Zealand is the spirit of the Lord is on our nation now and upon the servants that know and love him and know the culture and the language of our nation that it will be revealed to the next generation that most of the language that they speak in this nation is straight out of the biblical text. It's been translated from biblical text. So when our ancestors come into the gospel of Jesus Christ, of Ihu Karaiti, who we, we've called him um, in our indigenous name, Ihu Karaiti, there was a transformation and a modification of language and cultural practices. And so we've had a big gap of, um, we've had a big gap within generations where um, the awareness or the practice hasn't uh, been transferred because a lot of our older people have gone. So our great grandmothers and our great grandfathers are now gone. And so they knew this. And so there's been a gap where um, the next generation who have learned about themselves in institutions only learn 
that the gospel can only be bad for you because that's the thing that helped confiscate the land and took our language away. But yet it was the gospel that came and revitalized us and turned us from light to darkness and brought a new language to our tongue that brought edification and light. And this is the gospel that's coming back to our nation today and the revelation by the spirit of God that's coming upon us as a people today. And um, just as Elijah stood, some of us will have to stand and not waver and not shrink back and actually be the voice that says to the next generation and reveals it and lays it out because it'll be total shock to some, total shock to many, because that which they thought was the enemy is actually the words of guidance that they're speaking and the wisdom that's come down from their great great grandfathers and grandmothers that's come straight from the from the bible so please remember us in your prayers and if you have something on your heart to pray today please put your hand up there's still 10 minutes to pray so that's here in new zealand and there's questions coming up about it and i have been part of us answering those questions to the next generation because in the endeavor to find out the language and the practices they're discovering it's actually come from biblical texts and that's a beautiful thing how the lord god brings himself forward when the enemy thinks he's got the trump card and can offend a young heart and cause a heart to keep the gospel out of a nation the lord turns it around it's like the fire on the altar yeah he turns it around and calls a people out so god bless you in fact i'll pray I'll lead out and pray and anyone else feel free to lead to pray. So Father, we thank you for your word that is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. Thank you, Lord, that it cuts soul, spirit, joints, marrow and judges the thoughts and attitude of the heart. And we thank you, Lord, that nothing can be hidden and all must give an account. So we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're upon this nation and many other nations, that you are now separating wheat from grain Father, that there would be not a wavering between two opinions, but you would come straight with your fire, Father, and that by revelation of the light of who you are, the lamp of who you are, that you would reveal to nations. Even as this nation comes into the revelation of your beautiful and mighty word, Lord God, let it be so, we pray in Jesus' name. Strengthen us, give us courage, Holy Spirit. Lead us and guide us. Let our tongues speak truth, for you are the spirit of truth. And we pray that you would surround us and that you would comfort us as we walk through these spaces however hard it might be in Jesus name Amen Michelle has her hand up Michelle yeah. yes God bless everyone um, I just want to pray into that but I I kind of want to weave the whole tapestry, your nation and just the indigenous nations. Um, and just, I just ask Father God, we just, we just ask for your fire on the language. As your fire came upon the apostles and gave them the holy language. We ask your fire upon their language to ignite and illuminate an understanding of the gospel again. Holy Spirit, lead them into all truth. We ask that all ancient myths that are not of God be renounced and erased and forgotten and that only the truth of God will prevail from the gospel text from, as Mary Caraca said, from the original text. And Lord, we ask your fire to come upon your altar and, and bring people to God again, turn people to God again. Malachi 4, turn the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers. Turn the the generations to, to converge together as this gospel truth is illuminated, as it, is, as it revives the nations, the indigenous nations in, in the deep word of God and transforms lives and transforms communities and transforms cities and transforms nations. 
And we just give you thanks, Lord God, for your power, your Holy Spirit power to come upon us all in these times, in this age, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua. Amen and amen. Amen. And I believe that this uh, prayer goes well with what Christine was praying about mixture. I don't know if you want to pray into that, Christine, because you brought this. Yes. Yes, Lord. I, I ask you to really help people to, to take their stand and to, um, to focus on you and your word and the, reve the, the revelation of your word that they don't um, uh, go sometimes on this side and sometimes on this side and try to please people or to please everyone. But um, um, yeah, only want to please you and to follow you and your word, Lord. I ask you to really help to not come under the spirit of the Church of Laodicea, but um, to yeah, to listen to the Holy Spirit and to stand strong. And I pray in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah Mira Karaka, just as you were talking about the language. Um, it brought to mind Romans 10, um, which says Romans 10, 8, and talks about faith righteousness. But the faith mm. righteousness that we speak, mm. uh, we receive, sorry, it speaks to us as God's living message. And that's the message we want, the message that lives. For his mm. message is close to us all. It is as close as our own mm. hearts beating. It is in our chest and as near as the tongue is in the mouth. This is from the um, the um, tra uh, the passion, mm -hmm. but that's you know um, for um, the word is in our mouths and in our hearts, and um, it's the living message. It's the revelation of faith for salvation through Christ. So um, we thank you, Lord, for the word from. The, um, the fathers of the faith, the apostles and the prophets, Lord, that even Jesus spoke as he, he explained, he talked to those on the road to Emmaus. And it was a living message that, oh my gosh, they got it. Their hearts started to burn. And um, so we do pray for that living message through our languages that um, you've given each and every people group. Um, let those languages come alive, Lord, again, we ask in Jesus' name. Dennis, can I just add to that? I was just thinking about how in the beginning was, you know, the word and that, you know, the, the spirit was hovering, waiting for the word to be spoken. And then it began the good work. So, Father, I just pray as the words have gone out, even in Romans further down, it says, their voice has gone out unto all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. Father, as your word has gone out, I ask, I invite, I plead the Holy Spirit to begin the work of the creation, to begin the work of the doing. The word has gone out. I pray for the empowerment, the work of the Holy Spirit to, to be released, Father God. As you've given us example in creation, you spoke the word and then the spirit did. The spirit did. We ask as the word has gone out into the nations, into our nation, mm. I invite you, Holy Spirit, to do, mm. to do, to action in Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If there's no one else putting their hand up to pray, mate. Perhaps we could finish with our song, which was the Lord's Prayer, and it's actually in the language of uh, Māori, uh, uh, official language. One of our official languages is Aotearoa. The other one is, of course, sign language. You want me to play the same same one? Medical same one. Yes. Okay. Same one. Okay. So we'll Very go powerful. out with the song. It's only two minutes okay. long or so. Thank you, Heavenly Father, with the help of your spirit, Lord, lead us and guide us in truth. Lead us and guide us in all truth and help us to stand, we pray, in the hour that we're in. In Jesus' holy name, amen. God bless you all.
thank you for joining us. Margaret, would you like to say anything before we come off? Did you want to say anything? I just want to say that as I've been seeing your watch, your watches, I see that your nations, the indigenous natives, are very close to God and very close to Mother Earth. And they really know there is a big connection. And God bless you. It's really something that the other nations, me personally, this is what I feel, mm -hmm. something to really learn from you. And it really blesses me to, to participate in your watches. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Lord. you, Margaret. Thank you. God bless you all. See you on the next yeah. watch. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.